Chapter 37. A throbbing in my finger wakes me. I feel hot. My face is covered with perspiration. My right hand hurts. Several days ago, I cut my finger at work. The buckets have sharp edges. I have cut my hands before on the buckets, but this time my finger is swollen and throbbing. It, I must wait it out. I must not go to the doctor. She cannot help much. Who has any medical training among you? The commandant called out one day during the head count. No one answered. Well then, she said, her voice indifferent, her hands playing with her whip. You will not have any doctor. It does not matter to me. Still silence. Girls, please, don't be afraid. This is our only chance for medical help, Helen, the camp elder said. A girl of medium height in her twenties stepped forward. With her shaven head and wrapped in shapeless dress, her wooden shoes clumsy on her feet, she did not look much like a doctor. I am a medical student, she says softly. I went to medical school in Budapest. The commandant looked at her sharply, smiling ironically. How many years of medical school do you have? Two years, Madam Commandant. Well then, you are a doctor. And so the medical student from Budapest became a doctor. A doctor without medical tools, without medicines. A doctor who must report anyone who is sick more than three days. When we take sick, we stay away from her tiny sick room. We stay in the barrack, if possible. I close my eyes. I must hold out. I must not tell the doctor. It will heal. It is only a cut. My head feels so light. I am reaching for someone, but my hand feels so heavy. I moan. Riva, Riva, open your eyes. Talk to me. What's wrong? Someone is touching my face. She is burning with fever. We must call the doctor. Her voice sounds so far away. Let's put a cold compress on her head. We must wait till morning. We cannot leave the barrack now. I float away again. I float in an empty, endless space. Riva, how do you feel? Open your eyes. Our doctor is standing over me, gently touching my hot face. My hand hurts. I want to sleep. I close my eyes again. I know it hurts, child. You have an infection. You have fever. I must operate. She sounds worried. You are lucky, Riva. She is trying to sound cheerful. Just think. You are my first operation. She turns to the nurse, a girl with training in first aid. Let's get started. I close my eyes. I am floating again in empty space. How is she doing? The voice of the camp elder breaks through the haze. It's several days since the surgery. The infection is spreading, I hear the doctor reply sadly. Is she dying? The camp elder asks, her voice shaking. What can you do, doctor? I am helpless. She needs a hospital, a real doctor. She needs surgery. The blood poisoning is spreading so fast. I lie still and listen. I am too tired to speak. Helen, the doctor says, we must report the sick to the commandant. There is silence. I feel a hand touching my face. Riva, would you like some bread and jam? The camp elder asks softly. I open my eyes. I suddenly remember that when someone is dying, the camp elder offers her bread and jam so she will not die hungry. I am going to die. My voice sounds strange to me. I am going to die. I do not want to die. The doctor quickly takes my hand. No, Riva, no. You are not going to die. I will find help. The room looks blurry. I close my eyes and open them again. I see figures standing near the door, whispering. I strain my ears. Madam Commandant, it's the doctor's soft voice. Riva is going to die without surgery. My ear stops. They called the commandant. They had to report me. Now she is going to send me to the death camp, to Gross Rosen. Well, what do you want me to do? We have no hospital. But, Madam Commandant, the doctor pleads, there is a hospital in the town of Glatz. Maybe you could send her there. Please, Madam Commandant. Are you crazy? Why should I send her anywhere? The commandant shouts angrily. The doctor speaks again, slowly, calmly, full of self-control. Madam Commandant, I told you about Riva's poetry because I wanted you to see her as a person, not just as another inmate. I also wanted you to know what the poetry does for the morale of the other girls. So? Is it not important that those girls be able to work for you? Madam Commandant, if those girls can no longer work, you will have no camp to lead. They will take us to Gross Rosen, and you too will have a problem. I hold my breath. I am sure the Commandant will raise her whip at any moment and hit the doctor for daring to speak to her that way. The gentle, kind medical student from Budapest may have to pay for her life for her courage. The doctor presses on without any sign of fear. Madam Commandant, as long as the girls have a will to live, they can still work. The girls' morale is important. Riva is important for the morale. You must try to save her. Again, silence. I can hardly breathe. The power of life and death is in the hands of the Nazi Commandant, this cold, sadistic woman. What chance do I have? Well, well, doctor, you have nerve. The Commandant's voice startles me. I'll see about it. You have nerve. I hear the door open and close. Doctor, you are incredible, says the camp elder. One has to do what is right, the doctor says quietly.